Hi, everyone. Hope you've enjoyed the conference so far in the morning. Uh, my name is Joe Penn. I'm a senior UI engineer at Blue State Digital. Um, so in this talk, we're going to look at some poorly thought out design choices in a few emergency systems. And you might be wondering why emergency systems? Like, that's kind of weird. Um, obviously, I think it's just a great way to like humorously make fun of some design rules and like UX principles that you just should never break. Um, so before we look at some examples of these systems, though, I want to cover some like fundamental UI UX uh, principles. There we go. So the first concept I want to talk about is legibility. Legibility represents how well people can visually interpret the different letters of your type. And there's a lot of ways to alter the legibility of your type. So for example, you could remove the letter spacing, or you could make the font more serif. Uh, you can increase its weight to make it more bold. And there's a number of other properties that you can modify, like the font size or its kerning. And kind of in pair with legibility is the concept of readability. Now, readability is more about than just the individual letters. It's how well you can perceive all the different elements of the page. And again, there's a lot of variables that you can play with here. For example, you could bump the contrast of the elements. You could also change the color palette completely to better highlight certain elements and further play with that contrast. Your font pairings can also make a big difference on readability. It's kind of like if you adjust the weight of the font, by introducing a new typeface, you're elevating certain elements and making them more distinct. Your layout can also make a big impact on readability which can be represented in many ways. For example, resizing your column width or the spacing between paragraphs. Now, legibility and readability, they're important in every design, but they are critical when you're building a system that's supposed to warn people about an incoming nuclear attack. So given that every week feels like a year now, you might have forgotten about this, but at the start of 2018, we accidentally notified the entire state of Hawaii of an incoming nuclear attack. Now, obviously, that didn't happen, but it turned out the button pusher guy who was sitting at the desk uh, made a mistake, uh, accidentally read the report, and sent it off. So he was fired. But we need to take a moment to look at the interface that's used by the state of Hawaii, and I assume many other states, to actually send out these alerts, because it's really bad. So this is a photo provided by the Hawaii Emergency Management Agency, and the PAC CDW button, that is a nuke button. Like, I knew Hollywood exaggerated how cool this stuff was, but I did not realize by how much. So this is a better screenshot that The Verge was able to obtain from the software vendor. Um, and it's bad for a lot of reasons. It's violating all the things we just talked about with legibility and readability. Each link, it's roughly like 12 pixels tall, it has no letter spacing, it's a very thin font weight, it's underlined, so it's not very legible. The spacing between each of these, it's you know, an additional line, which is adding more visual clutter to the page that I have to parse through. There's no taxonomy to anything. The naming's not consistent. They're not logically grouped together in any way. And they rely on a lot of acronyms. The colors also have no meaning. There's no emphasis really on anything. So this is contributing to the page having some really awful readability qualities. And from a UX standpoint, it's a little weird. So this is a list of recently created alerts, and it's unclear to me why, in an emergency situation, an operator would want a list of alerts ordered by when an administrator put them in the system. This is a stellar example to me of really not thinking through the intent of the person using your product. Now, before I go over the next failure of an emergency system, I want to build on that idea of thinking through the intent of the user which is one of the problems you have to solve if you want to make an interface that feels natural to use. The first thing that has to be said in order to frame your thinking is that conceptually interfaces should be less like a giant screen of possibilities and more like a series of steps on a timeline. And every step or action you take is going to afford you more data or more actions that you can take. When you're, when you're thinking through what actions to present to the user, you need to start by asking, what is their intent? Which is a fancy way of saying, what are they trying to do? In this case, let's say I was building a mobile app for calling people, and someone wanted to call their doctor. You might decide we have to present two different actions to the user. If they called this doctor before, they're probably in their contact list. If it's a new doctor, you might want to give them a dial pad. Now, alternatively, if the person's intent was to call their best friend, you might decide we want to afford that person some additional data they can act on, like a small list of contacts they marked as favorites. 
Just by scribbling down user flows like this, it, you can, starting with the intent of the user, you can conceive an entire system of user flows that actually feel proper to the person using your app because you design the content of your interface around how they actually want to use it. Now, this might seem a little obvious, but even in 2018, we've all experienced user flows like egregiously long sign-up flows that just really frustrate you and break this principle. Now, figuring out what an interface affords you is one part of the battle. The other part is how to visually express this so people understand what your UI has afforded them. To demonstrate this, I thought it would be good to break down a complex product we're all familiar with, GitHub. The first thing I want to do is look at GitHub's use of color and how they use it to visually explain what is afforded to you. So GitHub's core color scheme is mostly monochromatic. Um, it has that green for a bit of punch and that blue highlight. And it's just, it looks simple, but it's actually really powerful. So for example, let's look at the skimmed down version of the repository page. All the subdirectories, the latest commit hash, the project title and owner, the links in the readme, they have a specific shade of blue. And all the less important links to the older commits are in a shade of gray. So this not only creates a sense of visual hierarchy, but it also effectively communicates a huge swath of information about what is afforded on this page. Another important goal to aim for when you're building an interface is consistency. This is both for the elements within your interface and how they relate to the pre-existing patterns of the web. Consistency is how people using your product um, can make associations as to what an action does. And you can see here that all the buttons on this GitHub project page might have minor contextual differences, but visually they're on the same scale, the same color palette, border treatment, shadow treatment. Now the individual users of the web probably can't name all those things, but they know when they see them together, you gave them a button. The other critical component for explaining to someone what actions they're afforded is making sure that you use the right language and symbols. So at the top here, you can see the default GitHub merge button. Uh, this is what GitHub uses. It's very clear. It's very distinct. Now, by contrast, the, the ones below it are a little bit less clear. So the, the second one just says merge, right? And, and it's kind of ambigu ambi ambiguous. Um, you, you, it's borderline valid, but you really wouldn't want to use it. And the word confirm, that's even more ambiguous because now the programmer is going to start to make an assumption as to what this button even does. Lastly, it's really important that in addition to clearly communicating what's afforded by the interface, you also give the user clear feedback when they interact with it. Now doing this, it can be as simple as altering the mouse cursors or animations, playing with lighting effects. I think. Google, in particular, in particular, with their material design library, they really nail this by treating each element like they can have a shadow casted onto it. So to summarize, a good interface, it consists of a set of flows that fit together in a timeline. Each flow starts with a clear intent. It offers information, affords a set of actions. And every action is expressed through consistent visual indicators, specific language and symbols, and it gives you clear feedback. Now, you'll never guess what public transit system is using an emergency system out in the wild today that violates all of these principles. Get ready, New York. It's the MTA. <laughs> if I show of hands, how many of you have taken the subway before? All of you sadly raised your hand. I'm, I'm with you. I feel a pain. Now, I want you to keep your hands raised if you, you're not only aware of the emergency brake in every New York City subway car, but you also know the proper reason to use it. I see like three people, maybe three more over there, almost no one. And this is really, really bad because the emergency brake on the subway will automatically trigger powerful air brakes that just halt a moving train, and it could take like 15 minutes to reset them. So if there's an emergency on the train and you incorrectly pull the brake, you just made it worse. <sighs> so, the specific action required to pull the brake, it varies by subway car type, but generally speaking, it's a cord you have to pull, and it sometimes has a latch and steering it. And by all of these cords, is this sign with emergency instructions. And there are so many UX problems here. <laughs> For starters, and like most importantly, it doesn't tell you anywhere why you should pull the emergency brake. Just so everyone does walk out of here at least knowing something really important, the proper reason to pull the brake is if the train is going to cause bodily harm to someone. 
say my leg got caught between the platform and the moving subway car or the train. But going back to the poster, to make the UX problems here even worse, visually the MTA is telling people with iconography they're being afforded an action for responding to an emergency. You have the fire logo, the medical logo, and the police logo. But then right below it, they use some really poorly contrasted text to tell you don't pull the brake in any of these scenarios. <laughs> Doesn't really make any sense. It's very confusing. Additionally, all of these columns are telling people that you're, you should contact the train crew, but in many New York City subway cars, there isn't a way of actually doing that. Looks like my screw went black, which is, is also as confusing as being told to do something that you have no way of doing. I also take issue with the language choices. Much of the text on this page is repeated, and it's probably what the conductor would say during an emergency anyway. It's also entirely in English, which is problematic because New York City is one of the most visited cities in the world, let alone the most diverse. And we're not being accessible to those who can't read English very well. Lastly, I also take issue with the color palette. Everything's just jumping out of my face at once, which is really confusing. Now, we spent most of this talk covering some <laughs> basic UI and UX principles and how a few emergency systems have thoroughly murdered them. But the truth of the matter is that bad design is literally everywhere. When you plug a charger into the upside-down plug of an airplane seat and it slowly starts to fall out, that's a really annoying user experience. When I Google a sports team on my Android phone, and then five hours later, Google decides to send me a bunch of push alerts for that team I never subscribed to, it's a really annoying user experience. When I'm trying to read a, a post on the internet, and suddenly there's this full page modal pop-up, like, do you want to subscribe to my email, which I don't, that's a really annoying user experience. So most of us probably aren't responsible for building literal fire alarms or early nuclear warning systems, but as technologists and engineers, we are responsible for all the other products and services that are being put out into the world. And that comes with a great responsibility. We have to make sure that not only we feel confident people can use the things we're coding, but that they can responsibly use them. And I think design is ultimately at the center of that problem. So with that, thank you all for listening. I have to apologize for ending a little early. When I applied, it was for a lightning talk, and then I found out not too long ago, it wasn't a lightning talk, so <laughs> I apologize for that. Um, I also have to catch a flight soon, so I won't be able to stay around much. Um, if you have any questions, you want to talk more about terrible subway designs, hit me on Twitter. would love to rant about it more. Um, lastly, if you want to help flip Congress blue this November, we have some open listings at Blue State Digital. My team in particular is looking for an experienced JavaScript engineer. I think there might be a few at this conference. Um, so with that, thank you.